Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. I do a lot of work on this channel to surface the cheap or free art technologies that I believe would be of the most benefit to you and also just would give us the benefit of experience and sharing and helping each other grow and become more affluent in the tools that are available. Uh, I want to start a new mini series tonight. Uh, when should I use dot dot dot? And tonight we're covering paint.net. We will cover others more in the future. And these are all things that I've touched on in the past, tools that I've pitted against other open source tools and sometimes commercial tools to see where the strengths and weaknesses lie. That's not really so much what this is about. It's about picking a specific tool and showing you the best use cases for that so you can know more what you're after and maybe what the best fit is. So tonight, paint.net, let's do it. Hi, and once again, I'm Nate. And we're jumping into this when should I use series starting with paint.net. I've done previous videos on it showing its strengths. Go watch those if you have a few moments to get some bearing and some history about how this tool functions and how it compares up against other tools. Uh, for tonight though, paint.net, I wanted to bring this to, uh, up again as it is a very, very powerful tool that I still use for certain things. Uh, it is highly versatile and it is highly scalable in that it has a very, very, very strong community of users behind it, uh, a very strong community of developers who are adding to this and just contributing their time uh, to make this stronger every day. Right now I'm on version 4.2.5, which I know is not the most current version, but new releases are coming out semi-regularly where you can get new features and functionality and bug fixes to make the tool stronger. So go check that out. One of the cool things that I found you can do with paint.net is it does actually support raw images with some uh, tweaking. And I wrote a blog post about it, which I will share with you in the description below. Uh, there's a link to it as well for specific DLLs that I found on the paint.net community that you can use to add this functionality in. So go check that out and learn how to do that. Uh, so yes, raw, <laughs> kind of, if you add it on. Uh, I talked about the uh, the effects. There's a whole lot of stuff, and that's really one of the great things about paint.net is that if you can dream up the use case that you want for, gosh, I wish it did this thing, the community, again, is very strong, and they have just a whole massive library of plugins that you can add to it, and I would feel confident saying you can accomplish just about anything you'd want to do in this from a plugin basis. Um, there are some drawbacks in that it's maybe not quite as strong in other photo working tools, but the functionality will at least, will at least be there as a starting point. So plugin strong, scalable for raw, um, those are some great strengths. I would say the greatest use case for paint.net lies in photo alteration or photo touch up. I became familiar with it uh, learning photography and just wanting to learn some basic blending or cloning techniques, which I've refined in here and was able to bring with me into other tools because this is a great starting point where the, um, the tools are transferable, I would say, and that you're learning how to use them a certain way. And those things are adaptable to pretty much any tool I've found so far. So it's a great learning platform. It's a great resource for alteration and for uh, photo touch up. The things that it's not good at would be things like digital painting or graphic design starting from scratch. It does have some basic functionality for vectors and things like that. And I've done some videos on that as well. Please go check them out. But that's not its strength. I found that it is most powerful in the photo alteration and touch up field. Uh, it does that very well. And I would say it continues to do that as its strongest point, its best foot forward. Um, some limitations is that it is based purely on .NET technology. It's all Microsoft, so it only works on Windows, doesn't work on Mac, doesn't work on Linux. It's kind of a smaller window of the art community out there, but if you are a Windows user, it's a fantastic place to begin. Also, the layering technology, while it does support layers, you cannot group them, you cannot um, impact multiple layers at the same time. There are some brute force workarounds, which again, I've done videos on that, but it doesn't support that out of the box. You can't select multiple layers and do things yet. Um, so that's another kind of limiting feature that may be a deal breaker for you. And if that's the case, those are the tools we'll touch on on this mini series, which will be more appropriate to that. So that's paint.net. Again, powerful place to start. Great tools to begin. If you're a learner trying to learn a basic photo touch-up tool, 
or even just a basic drawing tool. Again, it's not the most powerful for drawing, but this is a fantastic free place to begin. I'll have a link to download it in the description below. Hope that gives you a good picture of a place to start. Once again, I'm Nate. Thank you so much again for joining in this special uh, kickoff of the new mini series. Give me a thumbs up if this was helpful. Subscribe if you'd like to see more great content like this. And don't hesitate to join the conversation. Leave a comment that is family friendly, and I'd be happy to engage in conversation and help build this community of learning uh, that I'm looking uh, so much to, to make valuable to you. So let me know what else you'd like to see. Let me know if there's a specific tool that you would like to see included in this mini series, and I'd be happy to do that as well. Thank you so much. Take care.